And welcome back. We continue our conversation with Congressman Mike Gallagher. Switching gears a little bit here to a national issue, you being a military person would have some insight into this one. The uh, U.S., of course, has suspended its nuclear arms control treaty with Russia. Then Russia pulled out in response. What are the dangers that you see? What are the ramifications that you see? So this is the INF Treaty signed in 1987 with the intent of limiting the amount of ground-based uh, ballistic and cruise missiles with ranges between 500 and 5,500 kilometers. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a good move by President Trump. Uh, I actually had submitted an amendment to last year's NDAA to force the administration to determine whether Russia was in violation, and if yes, then uh, weigh in on whether we uh, were supposed to get out. So, and it was precisely intended to force what we're seeing right now, which is the withdrawal. And so I'm actually very happy that they're doing this, and let me explain why. One, Russia has been in violation since at least 2014. In other words, we have a bilateral treaty, and we're the only ones abiding by it. But two, if you look longer term at our bigger threat that we face, it's China. China is not bound by the terms of the INF, and so they're installing advanced missile systems all throughout the first island chain in the Pacific, all throughout the Indo-Pacific that are intended to target our Navy ships, and we need to have the capability to do the same to counter-target them. And right now, we are limiting ourselves, and neither Russia is being bound by it, nor China. And so I actually think this is the right move over the long term. And what about North Korea? Are they playing fair with us? Uh, in terms of the negotiations, yes. no. I mean, the history of our negotiations with North Korea suggests it's, uh, what's the best? It's like Lucy and Charlie Brown with the football. They pretend that they're going to play nice, and they pull it out from us at the last second, and they actually use the negotiations as cover to either covertly advance their nuclear program or to pocket concessions in the short term on the economic front and then make advances later. And so I actually think we've gotten no commitment from the North Koreans uh, on the question of denuclearization, whether they're actually committed to com complete, verifiable, and irreversible dismantlement of their program. I think all the evidence suggests that they want to move forward with the nuclear program. And when they say we want to denuclearize, what they're actually saying is we want the United States to leave the Korean Peninsula. And so I introduced a piece of legislation last week, a bipartisan piece of legislation that said the president and the White House are not able to withdraw our troops from the Korean Peninsula below the 22,000 we have unless they certify a set of conditions with respect to North Korea, which almost certainly they could not certify today because we need to maintain our presence and we need to increase maximum pressure on North Korea. So there's an upcoming meeting yes. between President Trump and yeah. Kim Jong-un. What do you think is going to come of that? Well, or is it just for show? I, I hope the best case scenario is that we could actually get Kim Jong-un on the record as supporting denuclearization in the way we define it, in the way I defined it uh, earlier. Now, I doubt he's going to do that. I, I, I think he's playing us for, for time right now. But I think, if nothing else, if we can expose that he is not serious about this negotiation, then we can go back to the policy of imposing maximum pressure. It's not a choice between doing nothing and all-out war. We have a lot of options in between. We had only begun to scratch the surface of the economic and military pressure we can put on the Kim regime, and we've only begun to scratch the surface in terms of clamping down on Chinese banks and businesses that do business with the terrible regime in North Korea. Um, so there's a lot of options we have, but we, we can't allow them to use the cover of negotiations to advance their program. Let me go back to a few local issues. Water quality. You have always been a strong supporter of the uh, Save the Bay initiative. Um, what are some of the other initiatives? What are the initiatives you're taking part in to protect the waterways sure. in our area? So quickly on Save the Bay, what we're thinking about this uh, year, over the next two years, is how do we take the organization and really bring it to the next level? We want everyone who's involved to come to us with an idea for action. What is one idea we can unite at night around, either involving state legislation or federal legislation, or even just pushing best practices where we can make this a group for action, not just a group for convening. And so I would welcome anyone out there listening to get involved and send us your best ideas. Two issues that I think are really going to affect our water quality in Northeast Wisconsin that we got to pay attention to. Obviously, we have what's called the PFAS issue uh, in places like Peshtigo, where basically there was chemicals used in, in fire, uh, you know, uh, department, fire retardant, fire retardant um, where we've detected troubling levels of harmful chemicals in the water. We need to figure that out, not only continue the cleanup, but also make sure something like that never happens again. And I had a call with the DNR earlier today geared on that very issue, and I'm considering a variety of legislative options right now. So more to follow on that point. And then, two, I do think we should have serious concerns raised 
by the Back 40 Mine Project that Michigan is pursuing on the other side of the Menominee River that could affect places like Marinette, Wisconsin. And I'm all for Michigan pursuing their own economic interest, but if the byproduct of that is going to be harmful uh, discharge into the river that affects Wisconsin, at the very least, Wisconsin should have a voice because our water is an absolute treasure and we have to safeguard that so those are just a few areas those three areas where we're going to be focusing a lot over the next two two uh two years where i actually think we can get some stuff done congressman mike gallagher always a pleasure to have you thank you sir thanks pleasure so very there. much and if you know of a newsmaker that you think we ought to have on this program let us know about it send us an email at tips at wearegreenbay.com or you can message us on facebook and be sure to join us once again sunday morning at 7 30. until then have a great day